a lot of um, hours that you need to put up and all of that um, so you have got people that are working that are working with you right now yes yes um, so I have uh, so there's a lot of job creation within definitely um, um, on one of the conferences actually in the pre owner there was a conference last year in Lord, Ch in Lord Charles by uh, organized but by, by uh, Department of Agriculture yeah there I said was I believe I, I, I truly and, and genuinely believe in this is a is a way to um, help government help itself yeah that if government can commit to give land tenure to graduates mm -hmm. specifically black graduates mm -hmm. in agriculture maybe each year they would say maybe give five to ten hectares of land to ten graduates from different universities they will be working on that one project um, and then give those graduates incentive so that they don't eat the project money yeah right there will be a lot of job creation because just by even before you start planting there's already jobs for agriculture you know, Precisely. so 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 I mean, if government had given people who did not have um, qualifications or expertise in agriculture, but just on basis that they have land, they've given them millions to do agriculture, and they done it successfully. Yeah. Why not give it to people who have studied it, and you will have created a lot of jobs. Here we've got around ten. I mean, 13 employees, uh, we have seasonal, permanent, and uh, contract. You know? okay. and then there are people who come and volunteer. So this is small, it's half a hectare. So you can imagine if you give people 10 hectares, uh, there's a lot of land. There's government land, state land. There is land that is um, unused, that is uh, it's, it's, uh, available for redistribution. Yeah. You know? so, so that is what I always preach, even on the prison, and that's what I said. It does not only apply on agriculture you know if we want to create jobs this is where you want to create jobs, in the townships yeah. because these people who are in the townships they're the ones who hold all these degrees mm -hmm. we hold these masters we hold these all these degrees I, I mean so it is only reasonable to take money and put it where there is jobs, and don't don't say you are creating jobs by bringing these big companies yeah. here who are not going to employ the people who you want to empower. Yes. You know. So I, I really believe in that, and I hope, even if it's not done now, but in the future. In the future. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah man. I mean, now, it's 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 not like you can imagine a young person looking at me and saying this guy is struggling in the same way that my neighbor is struggling my neighbor who did not go to tertiary he was struggling in the same way i've been to tertiary for eight years you know and i'm struggling in the same way as someone who's never been there so what does that say about the education it will it will say to that person to that young person that actually education is useless and we know that is not true you <laughs> know it's not true so it's important that even if we don't have jobs as graduates we use the skills, you know, you can, yes, yeah. because I mean, by virtue of being a tertiary, you are able to identify problems that an ordinary person who has not been to, to university cannot identify. Yeah. And it's, it's just a matter of you saying, OK, I can see that we need food there. Right. But I appreciate that this is not my field. So I will go and consult my brother who has a degree in agriculture so that they can teach me to make this thing better. Yeah. You know, even the guy who's in agriculture can see something that I, as a chemist, cannot see in chemistry. Yeah. And then if he thinks that he can do it, then he knows he's going to consult Mawande because Mawande knows something in chemistry. Then chemistry. we are growing as a community. Yes. You know, so that is uh, that is my my um, understanding of education. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. So what I enjoy about everything that you've just uh, told us today is that there's wisdom. In, 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 in your farming yeah. in particular and there's a lot of strategies okay 
talking about that, what do you have in your garden? What have you planted? Okay, so we are on our second season. Okay. We started with, okay, we've been having spinach. Um, because spinach you can plant throughout the year. Okay. So, yeah. So we have uh, spinach again. Last season we had spinach, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, um, turnips, leeks, um, cabbage. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So now, recently, on this second season, we planted um, butternut. Butternut, okay. Yeah. Squash. Oh, okay. Gem squash, butternut, and, um, okay, uh, pepper, tomatoes, which, like, they went very well. I, I see. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they're almost also at the end of their lifespan. Mm. But we're gonna regrow again because they are also like all rounder. Um, then we have green pepper. I've got sweet potato, um, kale. Uh, yeah. So there's quite everything. Yes, but we're going to scale down to only four crops. Okay. Any um, reason for that? Okay, planting all these different vegetables at the beginning was to see what works better okay. in terms of the market, yeah. in terms of the soil, and in terms of what I personally can manage. You know? So I know cabbage, I'm not going to put it again because it's a lot of work okay. and it's, a, it's not a fast growing crop. So it would take uh, 8 to 12 weeks to grow and, and then you, know, you sell it for 10 rand. So it's it's a waste of water, a waste of manure, a waste of, you know, of course we like cabbage. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, but not for me. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah, um, so now I have, we're planning on planting the tomatoes, because tomatoes, I mean, all the meals, all yeah. our meals yes. require some, some <laughs> tomato. Yes. Even if it doesn't, we want to put it in there. You know? So we have tomato, um, spinach, um, spring onion. Spring onion. Yes, okay. and then beetroot. And beetroot. Because beetroot is healthy. It's very, 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 very healthy. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what we'll be having in the next, in the third season. The third season, all right. Yes. And um, so you've mentioned everything that you have, that you've planted here. Yeah. How has the community responded to your farming or to your garden? Um, the community responded quite um, positively, like in a very, very surprising way because when I started, you remember it was before the elections. Yeah. Yeah. So when I came here at first, uh, you know, trying to fence the area, like some people were reluctant and, um, and they thought maybe that, I'm, that I'm, I'm sent by someone to come and disturb, you know, their land invasion. So I was not a good guy. Uh, but then after the election, I, I, I came again and, and, I, and I, I, I fenced the area and some people had questions, why you, why not us? I mean, that is, that is, um, it's normal, right? Yeah. Because people want land. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that you cannot take away. They want land for whatever reason they want, but mostly they want it for housing, yes. you know. But this area is not good for housing. This, uh, this big power line here, mm -hmm. and it's wetland, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's wetland. So that's what I told them. So that it was good for your farming? It's actually good for farming. It's specifically for agricultural purposes. It does not necessarily mean you can only grow veg. You mm. can also have some livestock farming, oh. like ducks and, yeah. So so it, it's good mainly for that reason. So that one was the biggest challenge that I had. I mean, because once you start fencing and then some people come and steal the poles and you know you are working on some Basari fund that you got from school, you know. So once it's it's uh, it's exhausted, there's nothing to take from again to continue yeah. with the project. So then we overcame that, and then everything became a bit easy, uh, relatively easy. Yeah. yeah. So so the, it's um it, those those were the challenges that I had, and and then now it's 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 just day to day challenges yeah. that are common in yeah. every yeah. Yeah. that you can um, also conquer from yeah yeah exactly exactly but the main one that i did not mention <laughs> you know you know this 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 is the problem that i think i have in as much as i'm passionate about agriculture i'm very passionate about agriculture but i think um remember this started as a food garden so a food garden has got a fund a specific fund allocation for a food garden it's limited to a food garden therefore 
you cannot expand as I've done. Mm. Once you expand, then you start seeing more challenges, right? But it's not wrong to expand, right? But I think the government officials to themselves, they think it's wrong. Or maybe the guy that I was working with, um, whether they didn't like it, because, I mean, if, if the idea of having a food garden is to supply a community and then you see that, you know, this food garden is actually not big enough for the demand, then you have to expand, yeah. right? Especially if you have means, and then you show that you really believe in this thing, and then you put money in it, and then government says, well, well, you just went beyond the plans that we had for your garden. We don't have money. That's where the problem comes. That's when I start having a problem with government, because government is restricting us from. I mean, we don't dream of puzzle shops. We dream of you know big, big, big industries. So. Yes. Government shouldn't limit us. Even in in, in spaza shops, if someone registers a spaza shop and a, a spaza shop is taxed, that spaza shop should be supported to develop into a supermarket. And then we will say a government is meaningfully supporting us. Mm -hmm. But if government says, after I put some money in my spaza shop to expand it to a supermarket, and then my supermarkets now need some shelves so that I can, you know, and then government says, no, we don't have enough funds, then there's a problem. There's a problem. And, 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 and I think it's a common problem, especially with uh, people who are doing agriculture mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the townships. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's something called farmer um, development and, and what? Farmer support and development, okay. you know? I initiated that thing. Oh. I mean, I mean, I initiated something which is in line with the farmer support and development. Okay. So all I need now is for government to do what the document says to support and develop. Yes. You know? yes. And they've been reluctant, but hopefully, government is government. You know, government around, yeah. is uh, they're very slow <laughs> sometimes. Maybe because they are focusing on many projects at the same time. So I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they will come and join the party. Yeah. Because I don't want to go to Google and say, yeah, agriculture is bad. You know, you don't go there because it is so difficult. No, I don't want that. I want people to come here. I want more people to see a vacant land and say, hey, I want to do farming there. Not to say I want to build a shack. No, 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 no. That mentality, that mindset must change now. I mean, if we put shades all over, the empty spaces that we have then we won't have a community because a community is it's a community because it has playing areas it has houses it has you know those things have to be there in order for it to be a community so if we occupy all the empty spaces with sharks then there's going to be a big problem you know and we'll end up building on land that is supposed to actually help us survive, survive. you know yeah. Yeah. yeah all right in closing um, so, as, I, as I've mentioned, this channel um, tackles a lot of youth development, a lot of motivation for young people that are, you know, sitting out there and not really knowing what to do with their lives. What can you motivate, what can you say that will sort of lift them up into doing farming, to going into farming in yeah. particular, or just in general, what can you advise the you know the young people that are out there that are sitting and not doing anything with their lives? Okay. So, so firstly, the most, the most important thing is information. Information, yeah. right? So it's important for young people to understand that they have to study, right? But at the same time. Because in, 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 in I think now it has become a norm that people go to university and they don't have a clear picture of what it is that they want to do with this education. So if you take education as a tool, you know what you want to use the tool for. You should know that, okay, I want this tool because I want to fix one, two, three. So if you go to the education system with with that mindset that, okay, there's this gap. But remember, that gap is not constant. Someone might fix it before you finish, but you have the tool. The tool, it's a multi-purpose tool, you know? So you don't want to underuse it. You want to use it to its full potential, Yes. right? So I would say to youth, youth, 
get information, listen to news, read, 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 read. Go and have fun, of course, I mean, but even when you go and have fun, I mean, mingle with people whom you know that are going to teach you something. You're going to learn something from them. They are busy with something, you know, positive, and they, they are driven, you know. So now, as I'm saying, like, the discourse is towards land. It is youth. It is... um. Um, uh, small business initiatives. So that says to someone who is sitting there thinking, what am I going to do with my life? Position yourself because that is what the budget is going to address. You know, small businesses. It means I must open a small business. I must go and register. I mean, it's just transit rent to register. It's even less than that. Yes. You register a company, you get all those documents, and then you start applying. Then, if something does not come up after you have registered a business, then you can blame government. You know, that is what we want to do. So, for me, I cannot go and blame the government and say, government, you are not working. And then government says, but... What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, ne? <laughs> so... As youth, we must position ourselves. We must, I mean, um, enhance our skills. We must be opportunists in a positive way. By by opportunists, I mean, sit down, look at where are opportunities. Yes. And then look at yourself and say, okay, this is the tool that I have. These are the opportunities that are there. I am more likely to get this opportunity because I have this, you know. Yeah, and then yeah, we can, we can, we can, and then let's move away from being obsessed with looking for jobs, you know. Jobs are here in the township. Yes, they are here. Do you something. know why I'm saying that? You know, last year we had um, there was a march, right? People were um, striking and then banning all the band. Uh, you save, you know. The liquor store was also broken into and burned down. Those people came back and built here in the township, as risky as it is. That says the economy is here. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of us identifying those loopholes and we start our own businesses. Precisely. You know, and I think yeah. most of those businesses will be here in Africa. Yeah. Um. So 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 here yeah, we, we want to also, if if tourists do come through. And we have like maybe a resort kind of a of, 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 of something down there and then tourists can, can come and stay in the township here at the Africa Yam. then we can have those guys who are doing uber um, mm -hmm. a business they can when the tourists come they will park their cars here and then the uber drivers will take the tourists for a tour in the township yes that is money for them that is business for them Correct. You know, we have chefs here who are cooking this food, you know, those are people who've done a hospitality, you know, they will come here and those are job opportunities, yes. you know, and the people who are doing this um, uh, wooden work, mm -hmm. it's their market, they can sell these things to the tourists, uh, there are people who are doing poetry, they can come, the doing in, uh, people who are doing arts and culture, who are doing cultural dances, and this can be done here, yeah. you know, and then we've created jobs, so it's okay to go and look for a job, you know, but let's not um, rely only on it. We forget about our own tools. We have our tools. Let's remember that we have our tools, but maybe I can go and look for a job so that I can move from point B to to this, and then I will start my own thing. Yeah. That, that should be the mindset. If we are able to do that, then we won't be a depressed youth. Totally. Please. Yeah, totally. let's not underestimate the power of education, you yes. know. Education. I mean, we can... F I, was, I was actually having a conversation with this other guy, and I was like, you know, those guys who are doing accounting, once you get to grade 12, I think you can use those CPJs and then and, too. And I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just a matter of you believing it, believing in it, and finding a purpose for it, yeah. something that will generate money for you, you know. For instance, I don't have someone here who's doing paperwork for me. I have to do it, unfortunately, because I don't have money to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I mean, don't have money for the yeah, tax exactly. Man. But I mean, if if you want to start your own thing, you come and assist here, and then it goes to your to your CV. Yes. You know, when you register your own company, you will say, "This is what I've been doing for Africa Yam." And I mean, there's a profile. You have a whole profile, and then you can be trustworthy because you've done it. There is 
Exactly. Something to show for you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, like we want to do everything. Yeah. 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 I see. The business is actually <laughs> expanding, yeah. and by what I'm hearing from you, it is going into places. Yes. It is phenomenal to sit with you we can talk the whole day yeah, yeah. it has been a <laughs> fruitful um interview thank you so much for coming through so that was e africa yam that is based as zola right yes i just want to ask this quick question do people or consumers do they come in to buy the veggies here or do you have yeah. a, a, a specific place where they can buy the veggies from? Like, so so we're planning on having stalls but um at the moment we uh people who are passing by they would come and we call them informal markets. Okay. Uh, they will come and buy. Some would call me uh, to deliver. To deliver. Okay. Yes. So ideally, I would wait for a few people who also want to their vegetables to be delivered, and then I'll deliver at once. Yeah. So that's how at the moment we're doing it. But we're still looking for markets. Um, you know, it's not easy to um, to get markets. Yes. Ideally, like when I started the garden, I thought it would be easy for you save to come and buy vegetables from us because the you save is a big company and it is in the township and it is supposed to contribute towards development of this township yeah. and small businesses in the township mm. so yeah but it's not the case and it's okay it's not a problem yeah. <laughs> you know it's it's okay it's it's really good that we're getting all these challenges um but I think in the near future, they will come to buy. Awesome. At the, yeah, at the same time, I don't want to say, shop right, come and get your vegetables from me, and then I can't deliver. And you can't deliver, yes. yes. Yeah. So don't yeah. shoot yeah. yourself in the foot. Yeah, yeah. But I think we have enough vegetables for shop right. I see, yeah. 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 It, is, it, is, it is enough. It yeah. is enough. Because the space yeah. is quite huge. Exactly. And awesome. then, yeah, we can work on a nice arrangement if they want, they're interested. You yeah. know, we can have, like, okay, we'll dedicate this portion of the garden to your produce. We know that we are planting for you because that's what these people are doing agriculture saying mm. you plant to grow i mean yeah. you you grow to sell you not we don't grow and sell no when you grow to sell you buy the time you are growing you know where it's going yes as opposed to growing and looking for money which is what i am currently <laughs> doing <laughs> but i have my informal um market which i think is also enough you know yeah. it's okay um but um i mean for it to make business sense you have to have a formal market yeah absolutely yeah. so we wish you the best of luck yes. for your farming for your future plans in everything else that you're doing up at the africa yam all right totally amazing so that was it. That is a wrap from us. Um, we visited Africa Yam, which is based as Ola, which is a farming. Um, Uma Wanda, which is a, um, who is a, a founder of this place, who is you know currently joined the interview with us today. Told us all the ins and outs and the challenges and all of that. And he told the young people to get education and be informative. That is it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe onto the channel. It is coffee from me. It is peace. In yeah, Africa, I am on Facebook. Um, order your vegetables on at uh, the Africa, I am or that's on Facebook and on my IC.